Good grief. Snowing on April 7th, y'all. Leaves on the trees. Grass is green. Birds are out. And we got snow and sleet. Well, I guess I should make that shop tour video you guys have been asking for. And while we're at it, if you guys stay till the end, I have a surprise. Definitely need to thank you guys. So what do you say? Let's get into the video. Good morning, everybody. It is April 7th, 2018. Um, it's snowing in Arkansas, folks. Snowing in Arkansas. Welcome to the Jekyll Bates cave, <laughs> crib. Um, I've gotten a lot of requests from you guys to do a workshop tour. So we're going to do that and because the workshop is attached to the crib, we're going to give you the quick rundown. Of the house there it is there's the house <laughs> and hang out in the garage so this is the Jekyll Bates workshop it is attached to the house which suits my needs perfectly I don't have to leave the house to work every day um, one thing that it is completely awesome at is self-containing everything that I need from hooks to a finishing bench art detailing here's shipping and logistics uh, we're gonna break this down a little bit further and this is the shop kitty um, she was a feral cat and there's Molly Brown one of three labs well actually two labs and little Yorkie Poo who thinks he's a lab. Pop Singh is one of two cats in the house and she was feral and wild and a rescue um, from when I still resided in Maryland and she was hit by a vehicle and I think she was with her brother a sibling when she was hit has no fear of the dogs actually her and Molly here are fast friends um, she likes to sit in front of this little heat stove. It's her favorite spot in the shop. Um, but she's just been an awesome cat. So um, I'm going to kind of break things down for you as we go through things that are not relevant to the shop. My plastics um, and this is just partial. Most of the plastics are stored in the Jeep. I've got a couple of finishing slash drying racks. Um, I've actually added wire to these to hold a lot more lures and then I've got accessories and envelopes and things of that nature clear bags these boxes are clear boxes and it's what I use to ship all the merchandise that goes out of here um, just some accessories over here some stencils um, a lot of people ask how I do the veining this is called Darcine wire mesh it's available on Amazon uh, all the stuff that I use, there's hyperlinks below so you guys can check that stuff out. I usually keep a candle burning when I start clear coating because it kind of does dissipate the smell. And then everybody has to have a ventilation unit. So this is the ventilation unit. It is a fan. It pulls and draws air out when I need it to, but it also serves as an air conditioner in the summer because it does get a little bit warm in here. Now I have since loaded the ceiling up here above me which is just a garage um, with a just a ton of extra insulation most garages if you have a workshop out in your house and you've converted a garage or a room if it isn't a garage the chances are good that there's no insulation over top of the garage most code doesn't require that it be there um, but if you want a sustainable place to work and you know kind of hang out this is also kind of like the woman cave for for me um, it makes sense because it's going to keep it cooler in the summer, it's going to keep it warmer in the winter. And it really helps regulate temperature and temperature is extremely important when you're airbrushing because most paint doesn't like to shoot under 60 degrees and the clear coat gets all nasty under 65 degrees. 
you really don't want to work underneath that. Um, and when it's super hot, when it's like 90 plus or 85, not, not only is it uncomfortable, these guys are going to be knuckleheads all morning. That's what they do is play around my feet. Um, not only is it uncomfortable to work in, but it's also, you know, your, your paint's going to thin a little bit. Your clear coat is going to, you know, be a little bit weird because they're all, it's all chemicals, even though your paint, normally what I'm using is water-based. Um, it's not the enamel-based paint, at least for the most part. There's a couple occasions where I use that. But this is the bench. This is the basic bench setup. Um, I use wires that I cut. Uh, you can get wire pretty much anywhere, but you can get it from Walmart. That's what I do. 25-pound uh, or 10-pound galvanized steel wire. It's about four bucks for 110 feet. It lasts for a very long time. A lot of people like to use paper clips, and I do use paper clips if I'm going to be hanging wiggle warts or things that have smaller eyelets on them. Um, but for the most part, it's cheap and cost-effective to just cut wire and use them as drip hangers, drip wire hangers for epoxy. Um, I have a various, a lot, actually, a various number of helping hands. These things are called helping hands. So you can get these off of Amazon, and that link is also below in the description. Um, the alligator clips that attach, you can see that's how I have the, uh, that's how I have these baits set up. And uh, for myself, uh, I, I can run between 25 and 40 baits a day although it is a long long day when I'm doing that many but um, sometimes people will wonder well how do you set things up in a run so basically you just decide which you know or, or for me how many orders I have of the same thing and I've got some new colors and patterns that have come out so I've got people ordering these new colors and patterns and usually that's you know that's just the way it happens so I'll set these things up and then I'll spray one color on all baits first and then I'll spray the next base color on all the baits and so forth and so on. And then when I get to the detailing, like for this, this is a Hamilton Cross set that's going out to two different customers. Um, I set the same bait up on one helping hand. I can set them up to where I can just work on each particular bait with the stencil that I'm using. For the craw, I, I hand cut my own stencils primarily, although I do like to use some of the hard cut stencils from Jonas Summers at Lure Color Studios. Uh, Russ Allen with Insane Custom Stencils is also really, really good out there. Um, there's a lot of places that you can get stencils if you don't understand how to cut yours. And that's, if you guys want to learn how to do that, uh, leave me a comment below and we can talk about how to cut stencils. So for those of you getting into airbrushing or maybe you haven't cut stencils yet and you're ready to jump into the next, you know, beyond the basics of two or three color on a bait if you're ready to move into things like this and you guys want to know let me know if you want if you want specific types of videos I will be more than happy to do my best to get them to you so anyways helping hands with alligator clips that come out because after a while once you've painted and painted and painted and painted they, they start to get gummy they start to build up that paint um, and they're very inexpensive I think uh, they come in a, a box of about a hundred. I'm pretty sure I featured this on a video before, but uh, it's maybe eight or nine dollars for a box of a hundred. So I usually keep a good bit of those on hand. Um, this is, you know, netting material. This is Wonderweb that I also use for detailing. Uh, the Darcine, I think we talked about a little bit. And then I keep these. These are all from Bill Lewis Setlock Hooks, which I believe is made by Mustad. And I, I keep these to cut stencils out of if it's just a one or two time use. Um, some various foiling, and this, this stuff comes from um, Lure Parts Online and Barlow's Tackle. But back to the bench. Um, the majority of the paint that I use is either Comart, which is made by Awada, which is where the airbrush comes from or it's Createx and Wicked. Um, I, I, I've used testers a couple of times. I'm very comfortable and, and confident using the Createx. A lot of people say that it's too thick, you have to reduce it. I don't have that problem, but one thing that I have learned over time is to up the pressure on the airbrush when you're shooting it. 
and then when you're doing detailing of course you want to reduce it I do use the wicked line of reducers but createx and wicked it's one in the same company um, they're they're a pretty decent company to work with but so is Comart. and then uh, the all the rage lately has been on this FW stuff that people are getting from Hobby Lobby so I of course jumped on that bandwagon I have sprayed it it is a little bit thinner you need to coat it a few more times um, the pearl doesn't shoot quite as well so you can reduce that a little bit um, but these are the paints so obviously I keep the paints right next to where I work so this is the basic spray bench and this is where all the stuff daily gets done this is one of uh, a couple of drying racks that I use you can see where all the epoxy has dripped down I use drip wires on the bottom eyelet when I'm hanging obviously with if it's a lipless I'm gonna use uh, I'm gonna angle it and I'm, I'm gonna use the drip wire and, and what that's doing basically is that's pulling your epoxy away from the bait so it doesn't load up on that bottom eyelet there's really no way to get out from having to clean the eyelets um, the, the the split rings and the hooks are gonna gunk up and not move as smoothly if you don't do that so just take the extra steps there's really no way that I know of to get away from it without having to do some work and clean off the eyelets this is KBS uh, diamond strength epoxy it's a one part epoxy there's no mixing involved with it but it needs to be stored properly in order for it to keep from hardening on top it'll get a glaze on top if you don't take care of it properly so what I do is this is a prego jar I like olive jars too because they're tall and thin and when you have longer baits like let's say you're you're gonna do let's see if I can get this up here if you're gonna do a jerk bait that's a 120 size or bigger you can dip that that's pretty much the gist of it um, you always want to make sure when wherever you're hanging that you have something that's going to catch the epoxy and you can see there's a lot of hardened resin on this I also have an overflow when I'm doing a, a big run of stuff down here under here is where I keep all of the uh, all of the blanks that I use now anymore I would say probably 70 percent of the stuff that I do is all brand name repaints I do a lot of spro I live near the Ozarks in Arkansas so I get a lot of requests to, to custom repaint the rock crawlers and the wiggle warts and things of that nature strike king is another big one so I do I try and keep stock in that but the the meat and potatoes of stuff is your basics your square bills your poppers um, medium divers I've got just a, a lot of different you know the the dinger I could I keep I try and keep a good good stock in that because that's probably one of the highest selling blanks that I paint and it's um, pretty high in demand as well and they swim incredibly good so these are the the dinger holographic s cranks and the pointers jerk baits uh, a lot of holographic square bills and then I because I'm a nerd I always keep the boxes that I have my uh, reels that I purchased my reels from I always keep those boxes because you never know warranties and things of that nature but this is uh, this is my understock of the merchandise that is going to get painted and go out the door so we've shown you paints we've shown you the helping hands and the workbench the spray station another thing that I do and this is just two nails folks super easy to do but it makes a makes a good holder and then the overflow paints some of the pearlized stuff I kind of try and section it so transparents pretty much I, I work a lot in transparents uh, there's a lot of clear water lakes in my area but I, I do send stuff all over the country matter of fact probably maybe 10 percent of the stuff stays here in Arkansas I do a lot of business the Northeast uh, California but I try and break this stuff down uh, uh, the model air I haven't used yet I just got a set of this so I'm excited to see how that sprays and then any overflow baits that are going to get painted work towels and usually when I'm airbrushing in between colors I'm going to clean the chamber out in the airbrush and hit it with some cleaner 
so keeping towels that don't lint heavily is, is a good idea as well and then just keep an, like an exacto knife and thin paint brushes for detailing trebled feathers and then split rings um, I do a lot of Spro VMC are the owners up here yeah the owner snap locks what else have we got here hooks so the stock hooks that I put on most of my baits are Bill Lewis set lock hooks like I said I'm pretty sure they're made by Mustad uh, most of the rattle traps now show the the Mustad line of hooks on them I've got an order coming in because I go through these like water and then I have upgrades so normally if the customers jump on the website and they're like hey we want some trocars or we want some gamigatsus I'm gonna make that happen for them there is an upgrade charge on hooks gloves are a must I always keep gloves to finish because you don't want to transfer the oil on your skin onto the baits another must that I think um, and this is something that you can probably look at folk, uh, pictures online but know that your forage fishes know what your bass are eating know what the trout are going after um, there's a lot of different ways that you can figure out how to paint patterns that are going to be winners and catch fish based on books and online material so I think that that's super important as well to try and make sure that you understand what you're painting and what it looks this like. This is where I put all of the split rings and the hooks and everything else, the eyes. I do a lot of work right here. This is also where I set up the baits to sell and do pictures for the website. Um, normally shooting the pictures for the website on the Nikon, although sometimes I do use the iPhone. The iPhones actually, they have a pretty decent camera in them. So if you have a smartphone, you're just starting out. Uh, you want to feature baits get yourself a setup it can be plain black is good to have as a backdrop uh, because the light just kind of gets absorbed into it and things kind of pop off of that so when you're looking at the stuff that I do if you're looking at my Facebook page or the website know that this is where it comes from and this is where it gets finished now I have a three tray for eyes and I've kind of got them labeled. I didn't used to have them as organized as they are now. Um, and it kind of got ridiculous because I've got lots of eyes. Um, also back there, I don't know if you can see through the Strike Kings, but I've got some stuff for hand tying the feather trebles as well. I do my own there, but I'm not as good as some other folks out there. All the split rings, I've got the, the little measuring cups numbered for the size split ring. So number two, number three, number four, number five, those are really big. Um, fast locks, if you're doing wiggle warts or I put the fast lock snaps on these little Johns. This is an emerald craw. And a lot of people are like, why do you do the fast lock snaps on there? Well, gives it a very erratic action when it's coming through the water. And then these are some of the newer wake baits, if you guys can see that. So this is pretty much the finishing station. Uh, I also keep a crappy old Swiss Army knife. Uh, no blade on this, it's dull. But this is what I use to kind of carve all the epoxy off of the eyelets when I'm finishing a bait. And then a trusty pair of split ring pliers. These are just regular old Bass Pro Shops. Inexpensive. But the thing I like about these, let's see if you can see that a little bit better through here, there's a tip that comes up above the little split ring hooker. And I just, this it's got a good grip, it feels good in my hand, and it's what I prefer to use. I've tried a bunch of them, and less expensive seems to be pretty effective for me. I also keep a ruler. I'm like, what are you doing that for? Well, um, when you get baits or blanks, if the website that they come from doesn't have a size chart keep a ruler that way you can measure it this is actually glued down it just stays there so just a couple little helpful tips and then an assortment of brushes um, a lot of this stuff I use for canvas painting this is kind of like the the shipping logistics station 
Uh, and then I've got some old blanks that will get sanded down and reused. They've all been float tested, so I know that they're not destroyed, so they can be repainted, and they'll look beautiful when we're done. I do not do these. Everybody's asked, do you do jig heads? No. These came from Don David. The only thing that I did different on this is that I've dipped the, uh, the powder coated one extra time. So it's not going to get chewed off quite as fast. My VMC hooks are here and you can see that I label everything. It's easier when I'm sitting here to just go over here and grab these as opposed to having to open a box every single time. Laptop. I don't think it's on right now, but hey, this is, hey, there's Michael Ornstein, my mentor, one of my mentors, super guy, um, has always taught me that kindness and being helpful is the way to go in life. Um, check him out. He's at Lure Me In. If you're watching my videos, you've probably watched his before, um, but he is one of the reasons that, uh, that I stuck with it because he's really, really good at teaching. And um, he does some amazing work. Also, Lore Color Studios, Jonas Summers in Australia is phenomenal as well. This, what you're looking at right now, is the last stop on the tour. This is the video station. And there's a lot, a lot of stuff that goes on here. I do the video editing over here. You um, can also see that when I do audio uh, layovers the Nikon that I use this is just it doesn't even, it doesn't have a flip out this is a I think it's a D3200 I've got a D3300 as well various lenses laser printer all of my uh, shipping labels come out of here and um, sometimes you just gotta have fun so if you notice you betcha so when I have a little downtime, yep, I'm a gamer. Love to do it. But this is the uh, this is the part where uh, I've got the the hard drive that can handle the video editing, and I've got uh, a number of external hard drives that I use. But this is this is where it happens. So props to Michael. He does. He's got a number of videos out there super tutorial very informative very easy to understand him as well and I envy the guy's lighting this guy has got the best lighting I still work like I live in a cave and I've got tons of lighting in here but it never seems to shoot well so I need more I know I do you guys can go fund me that'd be awesome but that's it this is the April 7th shop tour here at Jekyll Bates with Molly and Casey and Hops are three-legged and the studio slash workshop oh one other quick thing you guys see all these on the wall this isn't to rip off patterns but it's a good indication of what patterns have what colors so that when I design my own colors um, and my own patterns I understand what works well and they, these are just good reference charts um, one thing that I've learned not to do is take other people's patterns so don't do that come up with your own if you're doing basics yeah everybody does bluegills there's tons of crawl patterns out there but try and make it unique try and make it you try and make it like nobody else does it because if you can do that then you're getting somewhere and then these real quick are the stencils for various big and small lures that I got from Jonas at Lower Color Studios. I think you can also grab them from Cedar Run. But that's it. If you guys have any questions, comments, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys as always. Oh, and hey, real quick, while I've got you, if you've made it to the end of the video, you're here with me now because we're close. I hit a thousand subscribers last night. So, number one, thank you. Number two, I think I should give something away. What do you guys think? I think I should. So, here's what I'm going to give away. I am going to give away a custom wiggle wart Hamilton Craw, my very own design. Check this bad boy out. Let's give this away. So here's what we're going to do. I want you to, first of all, you got to be subscribed to the channel. 
leave me a comment below. Number two. And number three, smash that like button. Hit that thumbs up for me. We're going to draw it on April 14th. So tell your friends, tell your buddies if you're interested in airbrushing. We're doing a giveaway. We're doing a custom, unique stencil pattern. Wiggle wart in the Hamilton Craw pattern as a thank you for hitting a thousand subscribers. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I appreciate you guys, each and every one. Have a great day. I'll see you guys on the water. Happy casting.